seriously, guys. Yeah. Can I show you a real quick magic trick? Yeah. Only take a few seconds. Right. I'm gonna print this card out on my phone. Can you hear the printer? Yeah. I'm gonna pull the card off the screen and give it to you. Do you think I can do it? Yeah. I have nothing in this hand and nothing in this hand. But this is for you. What, your phone doesn't print? You're all stunned in silence. <laughs> Let me show you another trick. Read those triangles out loud. Paris in the spring, bird in the hand, once in a lifetime. You got them all wrong. You have an English accent, right? Where are you from? Australia. But you can't read English. Let me show you what it says. Paris in the, the spring, bird in the, the hand, once in a, a lifetime. It does too. Yo! That's a lucky <laughs> keep, keep that. Can I show you another trick? Let's see if you're mistaken about something else. Are you a good person? Yeah. You're all good people? Yeah. Nod your head, okay. Yeah. Let me show you if, if you're making a mistake, okay? Have you ever told a lie, ever, in your whole life? Yes. You've never lied. You lying now? Yes. <laughs> He's saying you have, okay. Yes. So what do you call people who tell lies? Lies? So what are you? Uh, you're a liar, all right, absolutely. Have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? Like candy and answer? What do you call people who steal? Thief. That's right. So what are you? <laughs> He's a bad person. He's a lying thief. Have your parents ever punished you? Yes. That means you haven't always honored your father and your mother. Yes. So by your admission, you're a liar, a thief, disobedient, rebellious. Is that a good person? No. And if you died today and God judged you, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. guilty. That's right. And should God let guilty people into heaven? No. You're absolutely right. So where would you have gone if you had died yesterday? No. Exactly. But hold on. You're still breathing, right? Yeah. You still, there's still hope for you. Do you know what God did for you so he can still forgive you even though you broke his laws? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? Yeah. He's God who came in the flesh. He's fully God, fully human. He lived a perfect life. Then he allowed himself to be punished on the cross for, you know what? For your sins and my sins. Your sins and my sins were being punished on Jesus when he was suffering on the cross. Yeah. Then he rose again. That way God can have justice. He can't just, he's not gonna just say, oh, forget about it. He, he robbed a bank, he murdered somebody. Forget about it, no. He paid the penalty himself. So God is a just God so he can give you mercy, okay? What you have to do, there's one thing you have to do to be forgiven. Do you guys know how, how to go to heaven? Confess all your sins to... What's that? Confess all your sins. That doesn't help. Here's what Jesus said. He who believes in me has everlasting life. John 6, 47. What's the action word in that phrase? Believe in. In who? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Faith in Jesus is what saves you. And notice this, it calls Jesus Lord. What's another word for Lord? King. King or master. Can you believe in a master you never obey? No, it doesn't make sense. So repent of your sins and believe in Jesus. I'm not saying be perfect in this life. You can't. But you got to fight against sin and believe in Jesus. So what I just shared with you is a message out of the Bible called the Gospel, which means the good news of what Jesus did for us, in spite of us not deserving it. In the Bible, God says, if you believe the Gospel, you can be saved. Do you believe the Gospel? Yeah. Are you ready to lay down your old life? Yeah. All its sins, pick up the cross and follow Jesus, right here, right now. Yeah. Even if Jesus leads you to suffering and death, will you follow Him? Yeah. Yes. All of you? Yeah. What's your first name? Sam. Sam? Spencer. Spencer. Lockwin. Lockwin? How do you spell that? L I C H L A N. Okay. Mark. Michael? Michael. Max. Max? Joel. Joel. John. John. Let me, I'm going to ask you four questions and make sure we're on the same page. Then I'm going to pray for you to receive Jesus and we'll talk about it afterwards. One, do you agree that you've sinned against God? Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God who died on the cross to pay for your sins? Yeah. Do you commit to believe, uh, do you believe he rose again on the third day after he died for you? Yes. Yeah. Do you commit to believe and obey Jesus forever and ever? Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to bring these young men to you. They just heard and understood the gospel for the first time. Would you please wash away their sin by Jesus' blood? Fill them with the Holy Spirit. 
turn them into new creations and send them out as ministers of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, guys, it's really that simple. You don't have to do any crazy things like climb Mount Everest, right? Just simple faith in Jesus as you repent of your sins is what saves you because of what Jesus did for you. But if you tr are truly saved, there are two marks that will follow you for the rest of your life. And I want you to know these because there are two kinds of believers, real and fake. I don't want you to be a fake believer. Real believers will continue to believe the gospel, that Jesus died for them, paid your penalty, rose again, and by believing in Jesus, you're saved. The second mark is to grow in holiness. You know what that means, to grow in holiness? It means... Footsteps of Jesus. That's good. But let me give you a simpler answer. To sin less and less, to obey more and more over time. Right? So let's say you're just an average kid now, but five years from now you start murdering, you start selling drugs, right? You're going in the wrong direction. That's not a mark of salvation. But if on the other hand, let's say you were doing marijuana and alcohol and sleeping around, and because you're a follower of Jesus, you lay those things down, and you seek to obey him because of what he's done for you, that's a mark of salvation. So, do you guys go to a church already somewhere back, back home? Yeah. Is it a Catholic church or a Christian church? Um, let me give you the reason why I go to a Christian church only. Read this verse out loud for me, for by grace, in that, in that gray box, for by grace. For my grace you have been saved through faith and that of yourselves. Keep that. Do you know what that's telling you? It's telling you how you're saved as a gift. You don't work for it. Do you believe that coming out of the Bible? I do too. The Catholic Church doesn't. The Catholic Church has a false gospel. So go to a Christian church. My name is Tony. My email's in there if you got to go, okay? God bless you guys. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you.